Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Okanda, my Canada core island. Thank you so much for watching today. If you're not already subscribed, please, I, I, I don't know how to ask you, but I'd be grateful. But without further ado, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? You clicked on this video for a reason. You clicked on this video to see me build a neighborhood. Here is what we did in the last video. We created this little shopping district area. Very Canadian feeling. But these stairs over here is what is going to lead us to the neighborhood area. So I'm planning on doing a little sidewalk that comes down along here and having an incline that leads down and back there is just all empty yet. So let me just show you the map quickly and we'll talk about it a little bit more. So everybody, here is my map. We have a few villagers here that we will be holding on to, pretty much everybody on the right hand side. But today, because we do not have our girl Tasha, because we need Tasha, we're starting to get a lot of black and white villagers for our permanent babies over here. But because we don't have Tasha yet, we're gonna substitute by putting Ozzy there and Dottie and Hazel. These will be the three that we put into this neighborhood area. As you can see, I've already started to plan it out there just above the shopping district area so let's just head over there hello everyone i know i just said that i was running over to the place that we were going to be setting everything up but i lost a little bit of audio but look we're actually recording a voiceover right now in davinci resolve it's so exciting i can't get over it guys i've been struggling with this new laptop but we freaking did it i'm so happy so I, as you saw, went and I got Ozzy's plot. I also grabbed a red steel staircase to get this build started. I'm so happy. I climbed up and found out that I couldn't put Ozzy's house exactly where I had planned to put it. So that was a little bit unfortunate. I did have to move his house one square to the left because it was interfering with the incline supposedly i don't know how that would interfere with the incline but apparently it was so you can't put a house on the front side where an incline is so i learned something new and i'm just going to show you the basic pathing that i set up for this build it's basically a giant t that connects both the sides of the neighborhood to this main road in between and it's pretty basic i end up deciding to just go with the in-game pathing and then put sidewalk on either side and I think that that's really cute because then I am able to do something else that I'm excited to do that you'll see in just a second. I'm editing this river back a little bit just because it's going to interfere with the road some but I do want to have a little water feature over here with a little duck stream. I think that'd be super cute so we're going to do that but I am just cleaning up the pathing and we're gonna leap forward to when I have sidewalks in, there we go. And now I'm gonna add in some leaves to collect around the gutters of the sidewalk. And this is a common sight in the fall in Canada is just leaf piles everywhere and leaves collected in the side of the, of the roads, like they blow there and they just get trapped on the side of the roads and they get all soggy and disgusting, but that's all part of the aesthetic. <laughs> I'm making Canada sound like really fun, right? Like we got like flies and bugs and like ducks attacking you all the time and like leaves trapped in the gutters of everywhere, but I promise it's just, <laughs> It's just part of life. Everywhere's got got its own annoying thing, right? Like if you're from somewhere really hot, then it's kind of annoying that it's just always hot. Or like maybe you have those bugs that are just making noise all the time, or I don't know. Put down below one annoying thing about where you live, if you have one. Um, but every place has its good sides too, so there you go. And I'm just completing off this pathway because I forgot to put the sidewalk on the lower half. So jumping ahead now, we're just gonna plan out some trees. I don't end up keeping these trees exactly where I'm putting them right now, but it just give myself 
a little bit of structure so that I kind of know approximately, okay, I'm putting trees here or how many I have to gather. I did a massive cleanup of the back half of my island to fix some of the terraforming and get rid of a lot of trees. So that's why I have like so many pine trees in my pocket right now because I was in the middle of cleaning all of that out. We went and grabbed some more uh, saplings and that kind of thing because I do want to actually have uh, some smaller trees as well and stunt them. I'm also adding quite a few little bushes here and there. So I'm sticking to a couple of different kinds of bushes, the olive uh, tea leaf and the hibiscus because their colors kind of match with everything. I will be setting my dream address for this island in the fall. So I am considering skipping ahead to the fall. I just have never done that kind of um, level of time traveling. I just time travel like days at a time. I don't really ever time travel months at a time or to put myself into a different season, if that makes sense. Not that I'm against it in any way. I just have never done it. So I'm like nervous. I'm like, do I want to actually build this in the fall? But I think it would make sense. And I am planning out pretty actively planning out my next theme and it will be more summery which is kind of backwards because I'm working on a fall island already and now I'm going to be working on a summer island but that's the way it is. I'm, I'm excited to work on that island and so to keep them looking a little bit different I most likely will set this this video series of Okanda in the fall and then I'll keep that other one in a more appropriate time for it, which will probably be summertime, more of a summer island. And I did try to use the white street lamps instead because I had a few white street lamps and I was running low on brown street lamps, but it just did not work because I do want this whole island to feel very cohesive and the brown street lights just remind me of Canada the most. So we're going with brown street lamps everywhere and I had to poach some from the beginning of my island from the entrance. So if you do see the entrance at any point, it has white street lights in it. So we'll need to go and collect some more brown street lights. These ducks are so cute. I was loving making this little duck area over here. I think it's super adorable when people have these on their island. So I definitely wanted one. And I think it's cute because we do have a lot of ducks and geese and that sort of thing in Canada, migratory birds that just chill out wherever there's a space for them to hang out. So yeah, these are maybe our Canada geese or, or ducks or something like that, swans even. We have a lot of that kind of bird in Canada. Because I am creating a lot of different areas on this island that I want to have very distinctive from each other or at least distinctive enough, I have a lot of different kinds of pathing and I'm running out already of custom design slots. Nintendo, I think we need another 50 at least. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm actually saying that, but I have a snowy path area, which is like nine tiles that I'm reserving for when I do my Rocky Mountain location. So it's just, it's taken up a lot of room and plus a lot of the branding things. Actually, if you watched my East Coast speed build, I used a plain white design for the top of my boats. And I forgot that that was the boat one. And that's where I built my Canada Post logo. So now the boats have the Canada Post logo on them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to go back and fix that. It looks terrible. So we're just doing some fencing. And as you saw, Kiki was kind of like trolling around. And I know at the beginning, I said that I wanted Dottie's house to go up here with Hazel and the potential snooty for my island. But Kiki was just wandering around and I was like, you know what? This middle house has to be Kiki's house. And I had a perfect idea of what I wanted to do for Kiki's house. So that's what we end up going with at the end is we end up putting Kiki's house in the middle between our dear Hazel and Ozzy for now, but hopefully it will be our snooty gal very shortly. As you saw, I put bookcases behind the Canadian tire and I thought that it would look great 
to put them behind the Tim Hortons as well. It just was very tall. So I ended up doing something that I've never done before, which is layering simple panels. And I do end up putting one in the middle to complete it, but I think at the end result, I'm a really big fan of. It makes it look like the sign is standing out against a wall, which is really interesting. And this tree has got to go, even though I do end up adding back a tree in a similar area. Yes, I actually end up putting a tree there, but it's a pine tree eventually. We will get there. I am not a big neighborhood person in Animal Crossing. I've never built a villager neighborhood before this. On Glenny, I had areas where there was like two or three villagers like clumped together one or two villagers but i've never actually committed and said this whole area is going to be a neighborhood and try to build it all in one go so it was a bit different for me it was a bit of a challenge and at the beginning i thought i would use a lot more of these tree standees they do make an appearance in the final build but they're just not as obvious as i thought that they would be in the beginning, I think I just add them into like more of the foreground right behind those buildings because of course you can't place trees on the very edge of the cliff. So I think that's where I like to use tree standees the most. And I actually used quite a few of them on my other island as well. I think they're a great item, especially when you need to place a tree somewhere that you're not able to with a regular tree. I think that that's really cool. They look a little bit cartoonish, but I think I like that kind of aesthetic where it just looks a bit silly and a, it's not too serious, but at the same time, it still looks good. It still gives that vibe of it being a tree, especially when you're just running through it. And I just talked right over me adding a deck beside Kiki's house. It turns out amazing. I'm so happy with the way that it goes. Uh, but now we're moving on to the snooty villagers house I'm calling it because I don't know who it will be it will either be Tasha or it will be Robin I think those are my two main snooties that I would like but I would also be okay with kitty or any of the cat snooty villagers kind of thing I would like uh, just to find somebody who's snooty at least who matches Canada somewhat and I had to build out the cliff quite a few times in this area. I kept thinking that I had enough room, but I kept not having enough room. So you'll see me running down quite frequently. And I didn't have a slingshot for that balloon, which drove me crazy. Um, yeah, so I keep extending that cliff to the left hand side to make enough room to be able to do what I want to do with it. And I'm jumping all over the place. I'm sorry if it's a bit chaotic this video, but I end up getting there eventually. It's just my style kind of to run back and forth. And I think it's, it's good to remember that you don't need to finish an entire area in one go. You can move on to another area, come back to it when you feel inspired again. I think the main reason why I'm creating this island seemingly so fast is because I'm creating it for YouTube and I'm creating content for you guys. So I wanna be able to create builds all in one go. Just one second, it's time to skip to the next day the next day so as i was saying i think the only reason why i'm going so fast is because i'm trying to create them as seamless builds however if i was doing them on my own time i think i would be doing them a lot slower and only when i felt inspired here we are with miss hazel we also caught her in her pajamas we're gonna bring her house over and get her set up it was a busy day in the plaza And it was the shortest day, so I end up just going forward right after moving Hazel's house. The next day. So, we've got some cuties. Kiki and Punchy were just chilling, and while I was taking this little shot of them, Teddy decided to join them, which was freaking adorable. Look at those cuties. I was loving it. And Kiki this whole time, as I was saying before, was just so adorable. I had to put her house over here. I'm sorry, Dottie. I think Dottie's house is actually more suited for the West Coast area. Let me don't know down below. If you're from the West Coast of Canada, what are your most iconic places that you think I should look up for inspiration? 
or what are some attributes for houses or neighborhoods or anything that you think need to be included. Of course, I'm gonna have kind of my mountainous area. Hopefully we get Hans. Hopefully we can put our gorilla in the mountains. We will see though. We might end up with another smug. I don't know. If we find Tex first, we'll take Tex. That's fine too. I decided this snooty villager over here would be a little bit of a gardener. I think that that's super cute and also quite classy to be a gardener. I am not a gardener, but I do really enjoy people who can garden. My mom is a gardener and I absolutely love hanging out in her gardener, her garden, and I think it's super beautiful. I really appreciate it. So I imagine that our snooty gal is going to be a mom type gardener. That's my that is my inspiration for this area so that's awesome i try a lot to get these post boxes to work but they just do not work in this area and so i move them to a different location and then i do end up getting rid of them from this build altogether but i do want to incorporate them into the neighborhood somehow so as i see this area more i'll just try to find a place for them that's totally fine we will get there and here I go, running down because I'm done with it. I'm extending the cliff. We're pulling it way out <laughs> because I also want to be able to fit fencing behind the back here. So that's why I'm extending it to the back slightly as well and bringing it all the way down almost to the museum. Not quite yet, but I will get there. <laughs> Just keep extending that cliff until I have enough room. I did want to have a pathway on the left hand side of my island to be able to go up to the west coast area, but I think we're going to have to make it a little bit more of a roundabout way to get there because I didn't want to cut this neighborhood short and not have it be the best that it could be. So here we go, our snooty gal is having her full yard area. And in this bottom left corner, I just added in a lot of nature because it's not really gonna be super visible when you're actually going to their house. It's just going to be kind of decorative. This build did take me quite a bit of time, so I've cut out all the times of me customizing furniture, going to my house to grab more, going and grabbing flowers, going and grabbing trees, grabbing fruit so that I can pick up trees, all of that good stuff just to keep it clean. And I heard somebody else say recently, I think it was Foxgrove that said, her builds, she always looks so decisive on the speed builds, but in real time, it's not that straightforward. I completely agree with that. Take everything that you see me doing with a grain of salt because I've cut out a lot of me just running around in circles for no reason. I've probably missed out on some times that I'm just running around in circles for no reason because it's a little bit hard to catch all of them. I also try to cut out when I'm just standing there looking through my inventory to figure out what I'm gonna do because that of course is a big part of it. Unfortunately, the items in Animal Crossing don't have little icons. When you look in your pockets, you don't see an icon of what the actual item is. So you do have to scroll through everything to be able to see what exactly is in your pockets in general, because all the furniture items will just show up as a little leaf. So, um, but I'm fine with that. It just, I will cut it out for you guys so you don't have to view all of it. And I do decide to give our snooty girl a little deck next to her house so that I can put some iron garden furniture on it. And I do include the fence in the actual deck because it looks like the deck is a little bit longer. I'm not really a fan of the way the fences are spaced, but if you do add custom designs underneath the fence, it always makes it look a little bit more built out. And I tried to do the white iron garden furniture. However, everything on my island is like brown tones and the white just stood out so obviously. So I do end up changing that eventually. And because this is our gardener, we need to give her a garden wagon. This is the first garden wagon that I'm using on this island. It's one of my favorite items. It just is so cute and happy. I just love it. 
So our gardener gets a garden wagon, love that. And just throwing down some plants and flowers and also completing uh, the area right underneath Ozzy's stoop. Ozzy will be our resident snooty for the time being. <laughs> it's fine. And what would a true gardener's garden be without a small vegetable patch? So we're giving our snooty girl a little bit of a pumpkin patch over here, which I think is super adorable. I've never actually made an intentional pumpkin patch before, so I thought this was super fun. I really like it. And I just like how it's just five little pumpkins and it just adds something, some little detail that's cute. And here we go, trying to pick up all the iron, iron garden furniture, but not quite able to. So we're gonna throw some bug models down so you have enough space in the inventory to pick up that iron garden chair and get it customized. Throwing a leaf pile on top of the fallen leaves. I thought that looked really good. And again, just our bug models everywhere. But first, here is Hazel already enjoying her yard. I was so happy and I decided that I wanted to work on her house, of course, because I'm scatterbrained. So here we are working on a completely other area and I totally forgot about those iron garden chairs. We're gonna give her a puppy. We gotta get more puppies. I have to go and get more puppies because I'm running out and that's like a key thing that I wanted to have. I'm actually so considering having Goldie on that. No, 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 I can't have another normal. Oh my gosh. Nintendo, please let us have like 12 villagers because I need, there's too many. People want more villagers added to the game. I'm like, no, I wanna be able to have more villagers because it's crazy the amount of villagers that I would like, but that I just can't have because I only have 10 spaces. That's why I just gotta make more islands for you guys. That's why I just gotta keep designing more islands. And I realized I trapped Hazel with that log bench, so I had to go release her and then we could carry on with the build. <laughs> So as you know, Hazel is a sisterly villager. She's our little party girl, our little party squirrel. So I gave her a little place to entertain here. I have the barbecue in the back and then I'm creating a little picnic area. And I, there's no picnic table item, but I feel like this log bench with the log table right next to it really serves as a picnic table looking thing. So we put down some items here, just some coffee and some treats for her guests to enjoy. And I think it looked really cute, but it was just feeling too exposed. It was like right there in her front yard, no privacy for her and her guests. So I moved the bike down, I removed the street lamp and I end up placing a tree over here so that there's a little bit more privacy. It's a little bit more secluded. There you go. And I think that turned out so cute. I really love how they're just tucked back there and I end up flipping the bike around so that it looks a little bit nicer, like it's tied to the tree or something. And I took Kiki's sofa away before because I didn't have enough customization kits, but I ended up customizing it to a customization that is one of the defaults you can get if you just go to customize a long, extra long log sofa, you'll have that customization. I think it's really cute. I love the brown tones. I don't actually often download a lot of custom designs for fabrics because 
there are so many options, especially once you talk to Sable enough and you get all of her options. I'm still working through getting all of Sable's custom designs that you can use to customize furniture and I, I just love it so much. So we're just filling little areas in at this point. I'm just gonna let you watch out the rest of this build and I will catch you at the end. But I'm really happy with all these finishing details. They just really tied everything together. Once I get most of those in, we'll skip forward to the next day when Kiki's house will be in, add a couple more details and we'll be ready for the final reveal. the next day. We have completed the build. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Neighborhoods are not my forte, but I think that it turned out super cute. I have this duck pond right here near Hazel's spot. It's not really a duck pond so much as a river in which ducks have congregated. So we have quite a few different species of duck. I'm sorry. And Hazel has quite a lot of animal friends. She has a little dog. And she has a bird bath back there. I gave her the little well because I think it's super cute and fitting. A lot of people in Canada have like fake wells as decoration on their front yards. So I thought that was super cute. I also gave her a little more of a backyard kind of feeling area. So this is where she can have a barbecue. And of course we got our classic fly. So she can be back here grilling up some goods and then everybody can be chilling here with their coffee and their Berliners, that's super fun. And of course they've arrived here by bike. I also completed the back of the Tim Horton sign with these bricks and I think that it looks more clean. I love Kiki's house so much. I am not sure why this tree grew because I had 
a apple tree right behind it. So by all accounts, it does not make sense. I love how it looks like she has a little bit of a deck. I just put this pot out in front of her house as decoration. Maybe she killed her plant because she was too busy reading. It was a good book. And I also gave her a tiny library, which I think kind of matches the colors of her house. And I think it's super cute to think that she's like supplying the neighborhood or trying to supply the neighborhood with books. And we have a little walkway that goes down to our steel staircase down the back. And then we also have our, our staircase down the front that can take you to the main drag, which is cool. And then if you come along here, we have our snooty girl's house. So we don't actually know who our snooty girl is gonna be. Oh, you are not a snooty girl, Ozzy. <laughs> Just a freaking show off. He just runs out of his house. He is so funny. Oh my gosh. Look at him go. Oh, what a champion. I'm so sorry, Ozzy, that you'll have to go. I really like you. You're too cute. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm not exactly sure whose house this will be eventually, but it will be a snooty villager. So I just decorated it very generically. We just have some pumpkins here, a little garden, and we also have a little seating area, which is very much like the seating area that I gave to Blair, who was my snooty villager on Glenny, my first island. But our Okanda snooty gal is going to have a little seating area as well. And I just filled out this bottom left hand corner with nature and of course this tree standee as well. So from Kiki's backyard, thank you everybody for watching today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you did enjoy the video, please leave me a like down below. It helps a whole lot. Also make sure to subscribe if you're not already because I do post content three times a week for Animal Crossing and I have some really exciting developments that are coming soon. You don't want to miss Wednesday's video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much everybody and I will see you in the next one. Bye!